Well, I don't ask for permission or guidance from central planners or sociopaths on how to live a moral, happy, and prosperous life, nor do I look for arbitrary authority to steal from or dictate the lives of my fellow Canadians. Pretty simple, right? Absent government, we would all have to use the power of persuasion, you know, uh, being friendly, cooperative, and, and coexisting together peacefully, and, and using good arguments, logic, reasoning. That's how we would have to deal with each other. But in the world we live in today, the one that allows the mystical deity called government as the platform or the basis for our coexistence and cohabitation. Well, as we all know, if you look up the meaning of the word government, government is force. Government is literally force. And as we all know, all governments to carry out that force is done at, you know, through the barrel of a gun or the threat of the use of that gun. The direct threat of of the use of force and coercion is that that is government. Look it up. It's in the dictionary. Every one of them will tell you the same thing. So really what we're talking about is, you know, in a place, any country, pick one. Let's use Canada because I'm Canadian as an example. So let's say all the Canadians in, in Canada were in a big giant room and there was this one very powerful, well, the most powerful gun ever but there's only one of them in the room well even if you know with the politics you have a few different parties so let's say you had no but they just gained possession so no there's one gun yeah there's one gun in the room and you have a population let's break down the 35 million to make things more simpler right because i mean numbers are just numbers mathematics is mathematics so let's say there's a room filled with 100 people the room is considered the you know the country of Canada. The hundred people represent the population of Canada, and there's one gun in the center of the room. Politics, government is all about lending legitimacy or giving authority to someone in that room taking possession of that gun. That's what you're talking about when you're talking about government, because government is rule. Central planning, central, you know, uh, power, central authority, coercion, right? That's what government is. So what you're doing when you go when, when you're going to your voting booth through elections or any kind of political process, what you're doing is saying, out of this hundred people in the room, who do we want to to uh, to take control of the gun? Now in that room. <clears throat> You have three people with headbands on. <clears throat> the speakers, let's say. And then a few other ones. Smaller ones. Well, what you have really is, you know, if they got the blue headband, right, they consider conservative in Canada. If you got the red headband, you're considered liberal. If you got the orange, you're considered NDP. You know, you got a few other ones, the Green Party, so whatever, and, and the Libertarian Party or whatever, all the other ones, right? But predominantly, you got the, the three biggest thugs in the room are your conservatives, your liberal, and your NDP. And what they're doing is they're standing in that room saying, or trying to, you know, tell the people that one of us has to have, one of us have to have gained legitimate control over that gun. We're telling you that you have to pick the rest of the 97 people in the room. We're telling you that you have to pick which one of us get to take control of that gun? That's what they're telling you. That's what voting, that's what the political process, that what, that's what government is all about, saying, which one of us do you want to take possession of that gun? Whereas libertarians, anarchists, independent people, critical thinkers, volunteerists are saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. If we're really talking about being fair here, if we're really talking about being moral and just, what we're really saying is, out of the 100 people in this room, let's argue, debate, and talk amongst each other and figure out what's going to benefit us all, where that I don't get to force my ideas on you, you don't get to force your ideas on me, and we can live and cohabitate and coexist peacefully. 
without me being able to use that gun against you or you using the gun against me. That's what libertarians are telling you fucking people is saying, don't give anybody the gun. Liberals and NDP, the people that are supposedly anti-gun should recognize this right away, but they don't because they actually aren't anti-gun. They're just anti-someone else holding the gun. They want to have the gun if it means forcing everybody to live by their edicts, their opinions, or their preference, or ideology. Like I said, if you want to fucking know who actually is being honest with you, who's being straightforward and doesn't want to take control of the gun, you need to listen to people like myself. Libertarians, anarchists, voluntarists, and not your and communist anarchists. These, they still want to have the control of the gun. They just want to pretend they don't. But people like myself, genuinely, I walk softly and carry a big stick. I don't need to fucking carry a gun everywhere I go. I don't need to use force to get what I want because I have a mind, I have a mouth, and I have a heart. Between the three of them and reason and common sense and logic, those other three, anything that I is reasonable, I can get with the power of persuasion or you know free market like trade, barter. I can, I can, I can use the tools that I've been given just like every human being. And I don't need a gun. People in government, people who promote government, central planning, forest coercion, central banks, they, think about it, their ideas are so bad that they need that force. They need to control and dictate everyone to yield to their demands, to their whims, to their edicts. So like the meme that's been passed around a few times is suggested, Strong people don't look for the gun to control people. Only weak people. Which is why even if you go back to the Bible, the, the old phrase, I used to wonder what that meant. The meek will inherit the earth. Well, yeah, if you use mysticism and collectivism as the basis for human interaction, as long as you're, you know, even a weak person, even a 98-pound weakling, if they, if they can convince enough people or gain control of the gun, right? 98-pound weakling in control of the most powerful gun on the planet is no longer a 98 pound weakling, are they? You can forget about the person. Now they become a representative of the gun. Now they represent the power of force, which is what government is all about. You know, think about your, 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 your lions or tigers or any of your alpha animals in the animal kingdom. They don't need anything other than what they are. Right? If somebody tries to challenge them, they just use their their net what they were given, not anything they don't get the lobby and ask for, you know, all the other lines to come to their defense and fuck with everyone else. You know. Even a, two alpha males go toe to toe, whichever one has the most power, the most strength, the most courage will win. But government has always been about giving the weak people or the parasites or the sociopaths or the control freaks, the people that would never in the natural order of things have any power. Government is exactly about turning natural reality of the natural world upside down on, on its head. Now, like I said, I mean, I know it was kind of a bad analogy to use the animal kingdom because in reality, people like myself, that may very well represent the alpha males or the alpha lions. We're not animals. I, I, I don't have to go kill a human being to eat. I don't have to dictate or control or use force against anybody to provide for myself or my family. I just need everyone to not fuck with me and I can do it myself. So, yeah, probably not the best analogy what I use in the animal kingdom, but we're not animals. You know, we're human beings. And... In 2015, the age of information, the age of the internet, using force instead of the power of persuasion or good argument or logic or reason is like living in the old days. It's like trying to rebuild an engine with fucking, uh, what, you know, sticks and twigs. It's not going <laughs> to... Yeah, the amount of effort you got to put into for the little bit that you get out of 
the dis disparity is quite quite amazing and quite uh, profound. So yeah, what it comes down to is in the room in a room filled with a hundred people and government representing the gun in the room. What us libertarians, anarchists, and volunteers are saying is either you give everybody the gun so that everything is fair. If you talk about fair and equitable treatment, right? So that one can't screw with the other, right? So that's the thing with the animal kingdom, like I was saying before. If you had a lion that's like 600 pounds and, you know, I got two and a half inch fucking canines and another one that's only 450 pounds got, you know, much smaller, the bigger one might win. But what, what, what libertarians, anarchists, volunteers are saying is like, even though I might have, might be bigger, stronger, and have bigger teeth, I won't even use that against you. I'm saying, I don't want to use that against you, actually. I'm saying just stay away from fucking using that fucking gun in the room and I'll refrain from using my natural powers or, or strengths or size against you. That, to me, is the most profoundly important thing for people in the Liberty to, Moon, to, to start really expressing to people is for the most part, we're the, actually the strongest people you will ever meet. But we're actually saying, we're the ones that even though we possess the strength, we're, we're actually the ones that are saying that we're so confident in the fact that we have the strength, we don't need to use it against you. I can go through my whole life without actually having to aggress against anybody as long as they don't fuck with me. I'm very happy not to bother with anybody. Like, you know, like as long as you treat me decent, I'll treat you decent. I've always been that way. People with real strength and character, that's what they're all about. And libertarians, anarchists, voluntarists, for the most part, that's what they're saying. It's like, okay, I, I get, you know, I, you know, I'm bigger and stronger or whatever, so no, I shouldn't be able to dictate and control your lives with or without government, right? Because strong people have the ability with or without the power of government to inflict harm or, or oppress and control others. What I'm saying is neither one. There shouldn't be no pretense whatsoever where anyone has any legitimate authority, whether it's because of their size or their ability to use religion or, or distort the language, no one has the right or justification or authority to use their the gun in the room or their size or strength to impose their ideas or preferences on anyone else. Morality is not about strength. Morality is about what is right, what is just. Recognize what is right, recognize what is just, Keep everyone on an even keel so that if you're going to choose, if you want to have government, either everybody's allowed to have government, which basically would cancel out everyone else's, right? Or nobody's allowed to have government. So everyone's allowed to have the government gun in the room or nobody's allowed to have government. If everybody in the room has a gun, everyone's still on an even keel. Everyone is still going to have to treat each other with respect, tact, and, and fairness because they know each one of them represents the same amount of threat. Or nobody in the room. Once again, nobody has that gun in the room. Nobody has possession of it. Everybody has to treat each other with the same tact, respect, because nobody has the gun. Or everybody does, same thing. Government, though, government is literally the means to give certain people in the room control of that gun. That's why it's a failing model. That's why in the future people will look back and say, oh, you guys, central planning, fours and court, what? That's how you guys still lived in 2015. But people like myself are what, trying to help and wake up our, our, our counterparts, our other fellow human beings to this reality. So yeah, if you're a liberal, a lefty, then acknowledge that instead of being anti-gun for certain people, be anti-gun for everyone or all gun for everybody. Quit picking winners and losers. Same with the conservatives. Stop picking your army buddies or your police buddies and all this stuff and saying, oh, it's, we should give them all the power and screw the... No. All or nothing. Fairness. That's, that, that's, that's being truly fair. It's Canadian libertarian. I love liberty. <laughs>